Our next speaker is Caroline Forrest, a writer and co-founder of the journal Pro Choix, a feminist, anti-racist, and secular journal. She's also a very well-known columnist in France. Caroline has written numerous essays on the far right, fundamentalism, multiculturalism, and universalism, including Crossfire, a comparison between Jewish, Christian, and Muslim fundamentalism, and Brother Tariq, the double speak of Tariq Ramadan, and Marine Le Pen Unmasked. During the Danish cartoons affair, she was a journalist at Charlie Hebo, which published the cartoons about Muhammad. She received threats because of her opposition to Islamism and for having signed the manifesto against new totalitarianism with Salman Rushdie and Taslima Nazreen. She is hated by the racist far right and has been beaten in the street by neo-fascists uh, protesting against same-sex marriage. Please give a warm welcome to Caroline Forrest. Thank you very much. First, a uh, really a big uh, thank you to, to Mariam and also Mariam and everyone in this room who did help to organize this meeting because we all know that we don't have the money of Qatar to help our fight, so we cannot do this very often. But uh, we know that we've got a lot of energy, and uh, there is a lot of energy in this room to make it possible. So thank you for that. Um, I, I'm just planning to give you a, an aspect of the, of the, the context um, I'm speaking from, just to justify that I'm going to insist today on the importance of promoting the antidote of secularism instead of losing too much time in comparing religion or original texts of religion. And I'm going to do that because at the contrary of maybe 15 years ago or 10 years ago when I was uh, working on the Muslim Brothers uh, on Ramadan on when we were in Charlie Hebdo publishing uh, the cartoons uh, about Mohammed. At this time in France, we were definitely facing um, this left we spoke about, this left which is not mine, this left with uh, in a sort of uh, cultural relativism, exotism, I would say, um, trying to always find excuses to extreme right at the moment it is a religious one, and especially if it is an, an Islam one, a Muslim one. Um, I'm remembering very well when we did publish the cartoons of Mohammed in Charlie Hebdo, we, receiving, we did receive many threats. We were under a lot of pressure. And I think the most, probably the most uh, uh, really um, bad time was receiving British journalists. British journalists are the worst in those moments <laughs> because they just arrived, so you're under death threat, etc., and they're just telling you. Some of them were not leftists, some of them were right-wing supporters, they did support the, the war in Iraq. Um, and those ones were telling us that we were the danger. Us, a satirical, anti-racist, progressist newspaper who just wanted to mock every religion, including Islam, to promote freedom of speech, to defend the right of blasphemy. And those journalists were explaining to us that we were we did put oil on the fire, like uh, if there is no fire, uh, and that the problem is the oil, not the fire. <laughs> and they said, but you know, Islam is forbidding to, to represent Mohammed, so why you did it? So we had to argue that first we were journalists and not believers, uh, we were, and we are a satirical anti-racist newspaper that we mock Christianism, Jesus, uh, Moises, Judaism, why we should not mock Islam, only Islam. And also we, we insist on one point, is Islam is also forbidding uh, to represent actually not only Muhammad, but every prophet. I'm not speaking about the Shia, I'm speaking about the Sunni, of course, version. Uh, but if we have to follow what the most intolerant believers are following, I mean, nothing is permitted anymore. Everything is forbidden, and we advise the journalists to, to take out the cross, 
in the in the churches in England because of course there is Jesus on it and Jesus you're not supposed to show it also. Um, this was the way to fight this cultural relativism, which is of course a major threat, uh, a major threat against universalism. We also did fight against this word Islamophobia, with confusing everything, confusing the racism. We do exist again, Muslims definitely it does exist with secularism, uh, feminism, and promoting this universalism. Today, I must say in France, I, I'm thinking, and I probably I would say in Europe, uh, that the biggest danger again that we are facing is because this stupid left, let's call it, is quite in minority in France at least today, really. We, we won so many battles on that. But we are facing now definitely uh, the coming back of a very identitarian right wing who thinks that the Christian identity is definitely the solution um, to face Islam. And this also is a major, major threat to secularism. And this is why I want to insist today on the importance of this word secularism, which I'm not so happy with. Uh, it's the English translation, but you know that in France we are speaking more about laïcité. And there is actually more a uh, word to translate laïcité in Arabic than in English. Um, Almania or laïka, even if it is accused and attacked, of course, by the fanatics of being the equivalent of uh, a state atheism, still it does exist. Um, and why I'm telling you that? Because I think that laïcité is a little bit more than secularism. Laïcité is really to refuse that we are living, to live in a society where the law, the justice, of course the state, is inspired by religious rules instead of human law. Um, and this independence is so important. That means also that the state is not here to recognize equally all the religion and to give them this special recognition it don't give to other regular associations. The state is not supposed to look at the, an organization or a citizen regarding his religion. It's supposed to look at it as an organization, as a citizen. So it's more than just um, law, it's a philosophy. And this philosophy is definitely what is protecting not only the non-believers, not only the atheists, but also the religious minority. And when I'm hearing sometimes people in France complaining of secularism, accusing us of Islamophobia just because we want to protect the public schools from the religious proselytism um, and in the same time promoting the freedom of religion uh, and uh, in the streets and everywhere else, I would advise them to just have a look or travel or live in a theocracy society for one minute. And when I mean one minute is really one minute. In theocracy society, no matter if it is a Muslim theocracy society, and of course today we have more Muslim theocracy societies, and this is why uh, Islam, uh, Islamism, Islam fundamentalism is more uh, a problem. But I'm sure that uh, if uh, we are all living in a one day in a Christian theocracy, we will face uh, exactly the same attacks, the same danger that you can face in any theocracy, whatever is the name of the religion uh, in this case. And this is why I'm, I'm thinking that really people like us who are promoting secularism, we should not take, lose too much time comparing the religion. Because if we're losing too much time comparing the religion, the original text, if one religion is a little bit more soft than another, first we are doing the same childish mistake that the literalists, the fundamentalists are doing. We're taking their religion too much seriously. Honestly, let's keep on the fact that human beings are quite responsible for their interpretation, what they are doing with religious texts. And if you want just one example of that is if you compare different Islamists who have quite in common, including in the Muslim Brother, for example, area, the Tunisian one, the Turkish one, um, the Egyptian one, you can see there is differences between them. And sometimes some journalists and um, people are thinking, OK, because there is some who are moderate and the other who are not moderate. And of course, it is just a joke. I mean, those people all think that the religious law is the best. And they want to achieve that goal. 
Some are going slowly, some are going fast. And why is that? Not because they are moderate by nature, because they are contained by their society, if it is a secular society or not. And I, I'm, I'm sure that Shafak Pave will, will talk more about that than the Turkish example. But uh, it's very important to keep in mind that in Egypt, the Muslim brothers can be far more radicals, appearing more radicals, because they're living in a society where the state has, no matter what they are saying, uh, the nationalists, the Arab nationalists, have never been secularist. They have been authoritarian. They use the state to uh, put the pressure on the secularist Democrats, uh, oppress them while they were sometimes also oppressing the Islamists who could have meeting in mosque. So who had this opportunity to be more the alternative. But they, they were not secularist. And this is why the Arab Spring is so good news, because at least it allow a real alternative, even, even if it's not going to be easy. But in Turkey, the AKP is no a moderate party. They're just facing a society with very secularist, where there is a constitution where secularism is just the base of uh, the law. So this is what is changing everything, and this is why we should not lose too much time by, uh, if not to promote blasphemy, okay, but if it is to compare religion, we should be very careful to not have another religion as a solution to fanatism. And my conclusion will be that I'm very optimistic that we're all going to win this, this war, not because we are uh, only uh, a lot with a lot of energy because we're using these precise words because we also and we are promoting even if we don't have the money again of Qatar we are promoting a model of society where there is a place for everyone at the moment where is not a danger for the other in our society there is the place for everyone including very religious people in their society, in the fanatic society, there is only a place for them, and this is why they will be always in minority. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline.